What is up YouTube and welcome to this The Boys Episode 5 Breakdown and Review. This is easily my favourite episode possibly across both seasons as this features some heavy dunking on Joss Whedon and Endgame. Now there were some great moments in this and even featured somewhat of a superhero version of Fifty Shades of Grey. So there will be spoilers in this video as we discuss this hilariously awesome episode. We open with the Dawn of the Seven being filmed, the riff on Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice which was featured in previous episodes and these references and jokes seem to have been expanded into the wider MCU as well. Maeve is filming a scene where she almost kisses the person who helped them in the movie but funny enough, the MCU would never be this brave having an LGBT character like this. I mean, the closest we ever got was one of the directors of Endgame playing a homosexual guy at a survivor's meeting. May have almost kisses her, and this is a part of a bigger take in the episode on representation, as Elena is being used as a PR puppet, as the PR team featured previously create the hashtag Brave Maeve, and are too scared to even mention she's bi, as it seems having two femme women as it's perceived as being problematic, they say. Even though a representation matters, they cannot be their true selves because it doesn't fit their PR narrative. Homelander mentions Joss Whedon's rewrites, and he mentions that they absolutely sing, which is a blatant reference to Joss Whedon ruining the Justice League after Snyder left. Yes, that is a hilarious dunk. Now, he's also using this as a new way, or at least using the whole representation, as a way to torture Maev. She thinks that he is torturing her, but he just seems to be so accepting of what has happened. Now, in a later scene when the movie is being filmed again, the same character that Maev almost kisses has a drive, and it's a thinly veiled reference later when Greg Grunberg pops up, who is, yes, you guessed it, Agent Coulson here, and she needs to take this drive to the tower despite some very weird mutants turning up. Luckily, Starlight and Stormfront pop up, and they say that girls get it done, a callback to the talking point and PR narrative they were pushing just a few episodes preceding this one. And this is a reference to the time that Captain Marvel took the Infinity Gauntlet off Spidey and teamed up with the other MCU female heroes to get it where it needed to go. Now, I absolutely thought that was hilarious. I liked the MCU A-Force thing that happened in Endgame. But here they're kind of showing that this is just absolutely forced in to get representation. I love the references, and we also had A-Train make an emotional, very touching speech about leaving the Seven, which is essentially his farewell. However, it was to Homelander's body double. Yeah, he, Homelander, I love and hate that guy. Billy is also drowning his sorrows after last week's gut punch that his wife won't leave her child and the compound that she's being kept in. And he takes his heart and deals with it in the only way he really knows how. And that is getting into a fight and being beaten up in a mosh pit. Which just says so much about his own self-destructive nature. He lies to Huey about being retired and off-grid. And says he maybe he's gone to Argentina. But really he has gone to see his auntie who hilariously is also a drug dealer. I guess the apple doesn't fall too far from the... Butcher, I guess. I don't know where I was going with that. But Huey and Billy have a tender moment as Billy says that Huey is his canary, which is a callback to a few episodes ago when that word was uttered in a scene with Mother's Milk. But Billy gets to see his dog, which was criminally missing from the first season and is featured prominently throughout the comics, who absolutely loves to hump everything inside. But hey, don't all dogs. He's gone there, and Mother's Milk is instantly concerned the minute that Huey mentions that he was called Billy's Canary. And ironically as well, this is a sign that Billy is being stupid. So yes, as canaries are used as a kind of a sign that they've hit a gas main or there's gas in a coal mine, well, this is a sign that Billy is absolutely being stupid. As of last week, we know that Black Noir is hunting Billy, and Huey and Mother's Milk are also in danger, and they're all at Billy's aunties. They can cut a fake gas leak and do their best Home Alone impression as they wait to be attacked. Now, Huey learns of Billy's brother and how he passed away, but they're interrupted by Black Noir, and I think that this will come up later as we learn more about Billy's backstory 
other than his wife being attacked by Homelander. Black Noir attacks him, and I was absolutely howling at the liberal use of See You Next Tuesday, as Billy realises that he has to be smart when taking on a member of the Seven. They can't just go head-to-head or toe-to-toe with a clone of someone else, maybe. But he says that he has pictures of Homelander's son, which may be true. However, it's hinted that he might have been bluffing, as it makes sense that Noir is a puppet of Stan as he makes a deal to spare their lives so the pictures don't get leaked. There is a reason why it was Homelander's pictures that are mentioned about being leaked, because, you know, Black Noir, yes, they are setting up these hints left, right, and center. I mean, on top of Homelander's video of killing a terrorist and a bystander as well, it would be terrible for Vault, showing that Homelander still has used to Stan and Vault as well. Hilariously, at the end, a Homelander toy is given to Billy's dog, and he says, F it. An homage to the comic version, and it's a cue to, for the dog to, you know, yeah, moving on. We may see a truce or a cold war between Vought now and the boys, as this did happen in the comic, leading Stormfront to attack them, which is where I think we are going, albeit a bit of a different way. I think that Stormfront and Homelander are going to unite together to take down the boys and take over the rest of the whole country. Homelander's story arc this episode is absolutely superb. And to be honest, the real highlight of the episode, as his story continues and his need to be loved and his PR system failing, is explored even further. The fallout of him actually having his war crimes leaked means that he is dropping points in public perception. He is failing heavily as he is called out by Victoria Newman, who in the comics was actually a male and also a soup. The comic book version was able to kill their running mate when they were going for VP, and it's a bit of a change here. In the show, she hears an AOC knockoff, with even the reference of walking like an Egyptian being leaked, which is what happened when AOC's video of her in college dancing to the hit bangle song was leaked. So I do like that, and there's even a reference to that, or the, the perception of the American right against her with the whole hurt feelings thing when we see the memes later on in the episode. He is a standard classic Superman 1 America 50s character, and these talking points don't work at all. And it seems like the public aren't falling for the traditional values of, well, Homelander and, you know, the Republican Party. People don't seem to like the fact that he's acting on their behalf when he wasn't even voted for. Um, Cummings, anyone? So he dreams of killing everyone, but instead he accepts the meme magic help from Stormfront. Stormfront is able to turn it around, but she talks to Lamplighter as well about visiting someone. That's even curiouser. He, of course, Lamplighter, was a former member of the Seven, and I think they may have been talking about Soldier Boy here, leading credence to the idea that she is somehow forming a new team and this team may have actually been people who used to be in the seven now like lighter in the comics actually killed mallory's grandchildren and was thrown out of the seven and used as a peace offering between the cia and the seven but i think it will be different here and there may be a reason why he is retired and if he is treating soldier boy then that is big so A-Train's predecessor, Marathon Man, was also mentioned. So there are a lot of previous members all being mentioned. And considering that in the comics, Stormfront had her own team, well, it looks like these are being pushed together. The fight and her tits are lasered, which is just one of the greatest lines this show has ever produced. And she now has the greatest superhero in her pocket. She also showed her true colors as Liberty, when implying racism to A-Train and how she used to be part of the Church of the Collective. Now, talking about the Church of the Collective, the Deep also had help from Maev at the end of the episode as his whole kind of arc is starting to ramp up. He's had a fast-track marriage and his whole image is being squeaked clean once again and Maev, as a whole out lesbian with a girlfriend, she will actually give him an endorsement. This will lead him going back into the Seven. So I really do like that. 
and they seem to be teaming up together to take, or at least she want, may have wants to take down Homelander. Now, what I think is interesting is that Stormfront also mentioned that she was a part of the Church of the Collective when talking to A-Train until they let other people in. Obviously, she's talking about people of colour and, of course, other ethnic minorities. So what if she actually joined the Seven to get the church deep within the Seven. Bit of a stretch, I agree. But the Deep has had a fast-track marriage, and this is all part of a larger story, I feel, that will appear later. And I kind of feel like Starlight may be involved, as her mother had a really weird change of heart. Other subplots involve the killer Kimiko, which was her dealing with her brother's death by working for the person Frenchie met last episode and taking up contract killings. I really like the scene here as they're talking about Hamilton and the paradox of, well, Hamilton actually being white in real life, but being used as a progressive story. Kimiko is being used to kill people and is dealing with her brother's death by, you know, what we saw in this episode. And this was actually her intro to the comic and this was a, her whole first scene and it's almost line for line and things like that. So I did really like how they did that. But I do like where this show is going. And Homelander and Stormfront are going to be an interesting pairing. And I think that the boy's target now will actually be Stormfront. However, that's it for this video. So please do drop a like down below. Please do subscribe with notifications on. And I will see you soon tomorrow for a stream of Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. And we've also got Ratchet, a whole season review coming soon. But that's it. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.